I was born in Athens, Greece in 1946. We arrived in Australia April 1964. It was very hard, uh, beginning was very hard as my father was the only English speaking person in the family. I had graduated from the, or matriculated from the Greek high school in Athens, hoping to continue my studies in Australia at the time. Mechanical engineering, that's what I, I was ready for. I thought, but of course without the English language um, it wasn't going to happen very quickly. But uh, things didn't turn out quite the way we wanted and I had to find work. Shortly, a few months later, I joined Kodak. And the only job I could get to because um, of my lack of language skills was as a storeman at the Kodak factory in then Abbotsford. And our job was to basically replenish the stocks. So it's continuous movement of chemicals into different areas, like the lab. A lot of chemicals were to go there, like caustic soda and hypochlorides and things, and you know, and all those things are very smelly, in, particularly in summer. Quite an eye opener, quite an experience, quite unsafe as I thought at the time. It was a very old building with dilapidated corridors, etc., and we managed, but uh, it was just hard work. It was a highly industrious area. We were surrounded by all different factories and we had the brewery on one side, Abbott's Brewery, and we had Phoenix Biscuits on the other side. So it depends which way the wind was blowing. <laughs> Either you make yourself very hungry when the biscuits were coming over or all the hops <laughs> brewing on the other side, which wasn't very pleasant. So we we're always hoping that it was a southern wind. In those days in Abbotsford there was no air conditioning or good ventilation. But when we moved across to Coburg, things changed because it was so absolutely meticulous with the operations. I was born in Italy in 1948 and I came out to Australia when I was six years old and lived in Abbotsford, not too far from the Kodak plant at the time. I didn't particularly choose Kodak, that just happens to be where I managed to get a job. I worked in uh, customer service when I went to Kodak the first time, specifically mail order. In those days, people from remote areas used to send their films in and negatives and so on with a request to have them printed. I don't think they came from New Zealand because I think New Zealand had their own plant, but we got them from the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea and places like that. I was also the tea girl. I was the youngest in the office at the time and somehow that was my job. I used to have to go out and get the morning tea for the bosses <laughs> and bring it in. So I learned how to make a cup of tea. <laughs> Probably in about the middle of 65 I left because they were going to Coburg and it was further from home and I, I found a job closer to home and worked uh, in the city for a little while. We shifted to the ultra modern factory in Coburg and we moved to then Building 20 in Kodak, which handled all the processing, colour print processing. And my job was basically to supply various departments with components relating to f slides and filmmaking, like boxes for the 35mm film or plastic boxes for the slides that they were very popular those days. Much later on, I uh, pursued further studies because I tried to improve myself. But eventually I found myself working as an estimator, which was at Building 8, which was the so-called administration building. And, uh, and of course the stock planning department uh, was a step up for me. I found myself behind a desk, so I never had done till that day. And then in 1967, we went to live in the northern suburbs. So I went back and asked for a job and I got one straight away. I just walked into the personnel office and I just said, is there anything going? And they said, we've got a job in the office in Building 20. And that was when we met and then we got married in 1969. They didn't mind you being married. A lot of women with very young children worked there as well. That didn't seem to matter at all. The only thing that was missing was the maternity leave. So once you got pregnant, well, you had to go and that was it. And then I left in the middle of 1970, I left and then I had my, my son was born. And then a year later, I went back and I worked in Building 8 and that was the head office. <laughs> if it wasn't for Kodak, we wouldn't be we wouldn't here, be together, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Mm. A lot of fond memories. <laughs>